For a limited time at Sprint, get $50 for each new phone you lease when you switch. That's right. You'll get $50 for each new phone on a prepaid MasterCard issued by MetaBank member FDIC. Just register for the card online and you're good to go. Get a network built for unlimited and a great price at Sprint. It's the best of both worlds. And get $50 on a prepaid MasterCard for each phone you lease. Visit a Sprint store this weekend only for sizzling Sprint Saturday deals. Card terms, conditions, and expiration apply. Welcome to Life Transformation Radio. This show is all about life transformations and our journey from where we were to why we are doing what we are doing today. We will discuss the hiccups, the roller coasters, and the blood, sweat, and tears that has been poured out while discovering our purpose. It is all about our transformation. Here is your host, Sean Douglas. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Life Transformation Radio. I am your host, Master Resilience Implementer, TEDx Speaker, Performance Enhancement Expert, and author, Sean Douglas. I want you to know that this show is heard in over 44 countries, such as the U.S., India, Canada, France, Belgium, Australia, and Panama. So I want, you to, I want to thank those who are listening from around the world. Life Transformation Radio is all about our transformations. Here is where we tell the stories of why we're doing what we're doing. We highlight that transformational moment that has changed our lives and how we use these to help transform others and elevate their lives as well. You can listen to us every Wednesday and on the first and third Fridays at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. However, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do special pop-up episodes with entrepreneurial badasses that have book launches, product launches, something that is going on in their life that we're going to highlight and let you guys know about. And that's what we're doing today. On my show, we have impactful and amazing guests that impact lives all around them. First, I want you to join our Facebook group community, Life Transformation Radio Community, right there on Facebook. And you can also subscribe to us on Stitcher, iTunes, and the Google Play Music app. If you have any questions for the guests, this is a live show, so call in at 657-383-1109. Again, the number is 657-383-1109. So please Help me. Welcome to the show, Jonathan Gabuski. Pretty sure I got that right. Yeah, you, you almost got it right. Just think of it as three <laughs> syllables and sneeze beforehand, and uh, you, yep. you, would, you would have nailed it. Uh, but the Grizbowski, but good enough for me. There you go. So, you know, it's funny, though, because my mother's maiden name is Greza Lakowski, G-R-Z-E-L-A-K-O-W-S-K-I. <laughs> you got that one. I mean, that, you got that one right. Uh, that I mean, that one's very similar. Right. So my grandmother's maiden name is check this out, Vishnevsky. Okay. Oh Jesus. Now, now it's spelled W I S N I E W S K I. There's not even a V or an F or nothing, but that's how you pronounce it. So everybody goes okay. Wisniewski. She's like Vishnevsky. They're like, what? How? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can, I so, can, I can see that. And here you are with with your last name, so simple and clean. Uh, you are a lucky man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, my grandfather was just called Ski like his whole life. You know? Yeah, I, I would do that, that too. Good. Yeah, that's that was my grandfather as well. They're like, you know, we're done with your your last name. But my yeah, my right. family actually grew up in a in a relatively Polish neighborhood. So like. Grzybowski yep. is probably uh, like Smith to, to some people in, right. in Poland. So, <laughs> Right. Yeah. My grandparents, same thing. Grew up in Hamtramck, Detroit, in a Polish neighborhood. That's just mm-hmm. where they grew up. So, Isn't that weird yeah, how that happens? Dude, yeah, I know. I was just saying the same thing. I was like, dude, like that's so like parallel, man. That's so crazy. So, But, hey, man, I want to thank you for coming on the show and spending some time with us today. Um, you know, I was reading through your stuff, researching you. And when you reached out, I was like, what? Like, I've never seen, like, like a service that you provide, man. And I cannot wait to dive in and just yeah, kind of sure. pick your brain and kind of see, you know, like, like the transformational moments that, that has kind of triggered everything that's going on, man. So if you're ready, I am ready. Let's get to it. All right, man. This episode is titled Guiding Entrepreneurs to Profitability with Jonathan Krzybowski. Jonathan is a techie, 
author, millennial podcaster, and a WWE fan. He is a rogue risk taker turned entrepreneur and national thought leader in digital marketing and branding. He is the co-founder of Penji, right? Is that right? Or is it Penji? You got it. Penji. Penji, perfect. An unlimited graphic design service for marketing teams that provides jobs and internship opportunities to Camden students and residents. Jonathan continues to share his journey through multiple forms of media. One of these is in particular his nationally recognized The Blind Entrepreneur Podcast, where he helps entrepreneurs that may be temporarily blind in business to execute their vision into success through the stories of other like-minded entrepreneurs. He also publishes challenges where Jonathan sets out on an adventure to complete a task in, in 30 days. Check out his YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and in addition to that, he runs a design agency, Waterfront Media. He also serves as a board member of Waterfront Ventures, a nonprofit initiative that plans to bring over 100 startups into the city of Camden. Dude, that just sounds freaking amazing. You're doing <laughs> well, a lot I mean, of cool honestly- stuff. It, a lot of cool stuff, but um, the things that I'm most excited about today is is why a lot of it didn't work initially and why most of it still doesn't even work to this day. But I, I'd say that the overarching theme to what it is that I do and, and, and my philosophy is just that never say die attitude and that that ability to always, always adapt and always change um, to your surroundings and to what the and what the market's telling you. And that's kind of like what has led us to 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 the creation of Penji, which I'm I'm really excited yeah. about talking to you today. Awesome, man! So the first question I always ask on the show is why, like why be an entrepreneur? Why podcasting? You know, take us through that, man. Like, why do you do what you do? I'd say, I mean, at the very beginning of the of the bio, I'd say it's just a rogue risk taker, and I'm the the oldest of, of, of three. Uh, and, and my entire life has been that rogue individual. I'm never, I'm never doing what I was told to do. I'm always going above and beyond to find a way to not do what I was told yep. to do in, in a way where it's all good. And, and it was all uh, posh. It wasn't necessarily uh, getting myself into trouble, so to speak, but I grew up in Philadelphia. I got my first bug of entrepreneurship right before right as I was moving from Philadelphia to New Jersey. And as I just got into New Jersey for the very first time when I was 14, and I started mowing lawns and, and it's a very typical conversation when it comes to uh, what an entrepreneurship career looks like. But I was told at a very really early age, even though we had 60 to 80 uh, lawns that we would do on a, on a monthly, on, on a weekly basis. And, and then on a monthly right. basis, we would just be mowing lawns constantly making a lot of money. And I was told by my mother that I needed to go out and get a real job. And, and, and that, <laughs> that real job moment for me was, was like, wow, okay, well, you know, th- this, I thought this was a job and I didn't even necessarily understand what entrepreneurship was. I just knew what making money felt like and it felt really good and the freedom of, right. of making money. It felt awesome. And so I was told by my mom to go out and get a real job. And, and like a, even though I am a, a rogue at some point in time, I, I did listen to my mom because she, at the, at a young age, how would, why wouldn't you listen to, to somebody who's lived it before? And, right. and so when I, when I told her, I said, I, I don't know why I need to get a real job. And she was like, well, it's best for your resume. And and so I was like, okay, well, yeah, I do want to go to college and, and I do need a good resume because who knows what job I'm going to have. Um, and, and then it, it led me to an amazing career uh, in, in just corporate and, and, and just other jobs in general, because I, I was able to work at a job called Apple. Uh, they're they're pretty, pretty mom, huh. small mom and pop company uh, that we've all heard of and all use on a, on a daily basis. <laughs> and, right. and so the, the two things that I learned from from those experiences was, number one, to have a ridiculously uh, a ridiculous work ethic because you're working outside constantly. You're sweating your butt off. And uh, so that's what the, the lawn mowing job taught me. And then the other aspect is the, the idea of what a company culture looks like and how to run a successful organization, which I learned at, at Apple. So my, my why, I would say, it is still being defined, but to kind of fast track the whole life, I'd say 
now to this day, my why has so much different than, than what it was when I originally started the business, yep. uh, you know, five or six years ago, because, um, I mean, I, I'm sure you have other questions, but man, the, the things that I've learned in this past year of my life in starting Penji, I've truly defined who I am as a human being. And I'm glad I found it now than, than later on in my life. Perfect. Man, I love that. So what was that transformational moment? Like why start Benji? I mean, were you filling a gap? Because it seems like, you know, in, in a lot of the business strategies that we have, you know, we talk about referral marketing, affiliate marketing, you know, multi-level marketing, network marketing. I mean, there's, there's everything, right? Business strategies. Mm-hmm. Some of the ones that I use is like category design uh, made famous by Christopher Lockhead. There's a book, Blue Ocean Strategy. You know, it's kind of the same thing. He's got a book, Play Bigger. That's like the blueprint, you know, for, for category design and, and business strategy. But, but what did you do? What did you do differently or, or, or what made you so successful, you know, in those three years? Sure. So I'd say um, when, we, when we originally started the, our media business, which is Waterfront Media, what we realized is that we wanted to become – we started the business for the, probably not the best of reasons. And it later <laughs> turned into, um, you know, so let's just start from the beginning. So when we started uh, Waterfront Media, I was inspired by other entrepreneurs. And I mm-hmm. was inspired by other famous entrepreneurs because I felt like, you know what? I'm really creative. I'm really good. I'm really smart. I can create a business around this. And it worked really well because it solved a relatively smaller issue um, in our area, which was uh, bad design, or it was the need and the desire for having like a website. Right. So we listened to somebody else. That was number one. That was our first mistake. Uh, I'm not going to say the person's name, but it was a pretty influential sure. entrepreneur that I'm sure you could probably put two and two together. And, and so we listened to other people. And then the second thing is that we just became what I call like a shell of a company where we only, oh, worked, yeah. for, we only worked for money. And we were really good at what we did and we grew fast and we were a solid company. But anytime you, you run a business where you're literally just like making money and you're transactional and it's like a, a target or like a Walmart approach where you're literally uh, going into the line, you're buying it and then you're receiving the, the, the the product. um, That is such Mm -hmm. a poor and and unfulfilling way to run any business at all. And, and so while we were found a lot of things that we could have done differently and then we also found a huge need in the market because when we were trying to when we were trying to scale our company we found that it was ridiculously hard to do it through the design process and and not to mention we found that we had a talent pool of really good designers and that was what we were known for is our design and so we started reaching out to other organizations and, we, uh, and other marketing teams and marketing agencies, and we asked them the question, like, hey, like, what is the hardest thing that you have to do in your business? And a lot of them said design. So that kind of got us thinking, right? Okay. So then fast forward to October 20th, uh, 2017, my now co-founder and I went to an event, right? And the event was uh, called Camden Catalyst, and we were asked by the press um, a question. Now, the event was like a pitch conference, right? And we were one of the design sponsors, et cetera. And, and, and so it, it, the purpose was the person was going to win $25,000. And we weren't in the, the, the pitch competition. Hmm. The person was going to win $25,000. And, yeah. um, and it was the first of its kind in the city of Camden. And if you Google Camden, Camden is one of, used to be, and it's revitalizing as we speak, but it used to be one of the, the world's most dangerous cities in America. Wow, and and it's been filled with negativity. It's been filled with um, just bad press and just just a lot of drugs, violence. I mean, the list goes on and on. And yeah. and so we've been in the city for about three, four years now. And so we were asked the question at the at the event: What are you doing for the city of Camden? And what are you doing in order to keep the talent in the city of Camden? And we had absolutely no answer to that question. We said, no, we, we had no idea. We didn't even answer the question. Wow. We, we did one of those like um, um, basketball interview uh, dodges where we just completely <laughs> answered the question in a different way. But um, right. so we 
then we and then it got us thinking and the very next day we launched Penji. And wow. we launched Penji to do a couple of things. Number one, to deliver an amazing service of unlimited graphic design to marketing teams, startups, agencies. But the most important thing that we had was our why, going back to the original question. And that was to provide yep. internships and job opportunities to the residents and students of Camden. And so Love what it. we want to do is we want to change the narrative of what a successful startup and a successful business looks like. Because if all these businesses that are going to be coming into the city of Camden and they have much more money and much more resources than we do, and if we're able to hire a talent pool of students and give jobs and opportunities to people that may not be able to have them and may not have the best uh, resume or they may not look like you and I, um, and we're providing the opportunities for these kids and, and, and also adults, then why aren't you able to yeah. do it as a business? So there's no excuse for you to do it um, if we're able to do it. And we're, uh, right. we're a cash flow positive organization. Uh, we have over 200 clients at this point in time. And we've done everything from uh, just hard work and, and, and strategic planning. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and so there's no excuse for other businesses to do the same. They could do it too. They, they just have to be able to care enough. And I think that's the differentiation for us is we care a whole lot about the talent and, and the people of our city. Um, and, and, and it's, it's brought dividends. It's, it's allowed us to grow because of it. That's amazing. That's awesome. So I, I love how you kind of filled or noticed that two things needed to be filled, right? I mean, you were calling other places like, well, what's the hardest thing? And, and then you went after that, right? I mean, you're kind of creating like your own category. And then somebody asked you the question, you're like, crap, yeah. I never thought about it. You know, like yeah. the next day, like, let's get started. Like you just didn't like, you know, you just didn't like let it go. You didn't just like, oh, those guys are crazy. Like they don't know what they're talking about. You know, like you took action on it, and 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 you, I, I'm sure you guys have like blown up and grown. You know, just because of that, and and you know, just yeah, become that go to place. Well, that's that's the goal. It's still a work in progress. I, I can sure. say that Penji was actually an an idea that we formed way before the October event. But we, mm -hmm. we knew that we, we had no, quote unquote, launch day in sight. But we knew as soon as that we couldn't answer that question that we needed to launch it the next day. Yep. And, yeah. and so what we did was a lot of, I mean, it's a relatively new model of business. There are sure. competitors out there and they're going to the second. The thing that, that we wanted to focus on is, number one, we were an agency first. And we understand what it takes in order to make a, 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 an agency happy. So before the agencies were our competition, because we're in the same room as these other agencies trying to differentiate ourselves, now our, yep. the agencies are our customers because those are the people that we're helping. And those are the people that need design because it's expensive to hire a designer. And it's also oh, yeah. a lot of time to onboard these people. Um, the, onboard these these uh, designers because you have to train them about your clients. You have to train them about your your company culture. You have to make sure that they get insurance and days off. I mean, that's a lot of a lot of time and a lot of money that that's mm -hmm. invested in this. And so, what we do is every every hire that we hire in the United States is from the city of Camden. Um, that's our promise. Wow. And so um, we do outsource, uh, and so there's no there's no like it's sure. an obvious thing that you have to outsource at some point. Um, but yeah. every employee is located in the, uh, in the United States is located here in the city of Camden. Uh, we have about like, uh, 12, 12, 13 people here in the city and, and growing. And since January, we've been able to hire, um, I, I think we're at like five now, uh, five students. So yeah, it's, and that's just from January, just from the growth. It, it's, so it's, it's been a yeah. fun ride. Man, that's awesome, dude. I'm happy to hear that. That's freaking amazing. And you guys do amazing work, too. Like, I've seen some of my friends have used you, you know, for some of their design work. And that's how we got connected was through, like, a mutual friend and said, dude, you got to check this guy out. Like, the design work. And, you know, he's a good dude. And, you know, here you are, man. So, um, you know, I got, I, I got you on, uh, on my computer desk. You know what I mean? Like, if mm -hmm. I need design work, like, okay, got it. You know, I know who to go to. You know, yeah. you, you come highly recommended, you know, and I've seen the well, work that good. you've done. So good job, man. That's good. Well, that's really good to hear. It's, um, 
uh, honestly, I, I I wish I could take all the blame, but or, or take all the credit for it. But every <laughs> every all the credit goes to the team, and and I think that's just yeah. a lot of a good way to to run business because now, um, mm-hmm. and and I'm sure we'll get into stuff like this before, but I, I I'd say my leadership skills, um, have grown rapidly in the past couple of months, um, because I used to be such a poor leader and a very egotistical leader at that. And, and I think we all go through that mindset, but I think now, ever since the creation of Penji, we all realize that, you know what, we're not bigger than the company. The company yeah. is always bigger than us. And every person, even the CEO, even the co-founders, you're replaceable. And so you have to be able to earn your position, whether you're at the bottom mm-hmm. or at the top. And, and, and so that's just, that's just the way we work. And we're, we're, we're working some, we're all rowing the boat at the same exact time trying to reach that goal. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So, and you, you know, I love it that you just kind of touched on it. Cause that goes into kind of my follow-up question where we tie it all together. So you have a huge why man, which is super awesome. But what was that transformation moment? Or how have you been transformed through this process of, of creating Penji and, and, you know, hiring people from Camden, like, like, how do you feel like you've been transformed? So the way I look at it is, um, I, I'd say there's a lot of, I, I think inclusion is everything. Mm-hmm. Inclusion is, is really important. And so I know myself and I'm very self-aware in, in just every aspect of my, my life. And, and so what I realized is I have a gift and I need to be able to give and help other people achieve the things that they want to do rather than necessarily focus on the things that I need. And there you go. for a long time, I always thought that everybody needed to, to – it was about me, right, in, in a very selfish way. Um, it was yeah. about me. It was about my goals. It's like, well, you need to help this because this is helping us. And no, if you can find a way to – I, I, the way I say it is get out of your own way. Oh and yeah. Heard that your, a lot. Put your e- <laughs> yeah. And put your, put your ego aside. You could accomplish a hell of a lot just by that shift in mindset. Is that to me yeah. is that, that is, has been the, the transformational experience is that yeah. aspect of, yes, you can love what you do and you can be passionate, but, and the realization that, you know what, man, like nobody gives a crap about you and, and nobody cares as much as you do. And that's okay. But you need right. to be able to help them achieve their dreams because if you're able to help there them achieve their dreams, then anybody will be able to uh, help you achieve yours. And that doesn't necessarily, Boom. that goes in sales, that goes in, um, in relationships, that goes in friendships, but the problem is that we're too selfish to, and I'm not, I'm, this is generalization. And for sure. the most part, it's the majority. We're too selfish to not even know what our best friend's dreams are mm-hmm. or to not even know the person that you're working with on the opposite end of the, of the room. We don't even know what their dream is. So if yep. we don't know what their dream is, then how are the hell are they supposed to know? How are they supposed to help, help you? Because they, everybody cares more about themselves than for the most part. And so you have to be able to find a way to, yeah. as a leader, trigger that and help them out first and then let them help you whenever the time comes. If that, if that yep. even comes. Definitely. Yep. Absolutely, man. So yeah, I love that, man. That was huge, man. Like all I hear is about like building relationships, leadership and like all the cool stuff that, you know, we always hear about, but we're not sure how to do, man. And it sounds like you're just, you're all on top of it. So that's, that's amazing. Uh, what about the podcast, man? Talk about the podcast for a second. What made you start the podcast? Uh, the honest answer is to cure loneliness. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, awesome. I mean, I mean, I mean, honestly, that, that's really it. And, and, and two things really to cure loneliness. Um, but also to find out problems that I'm having in my own life. Um, and I'm sure, so that's why you, why you, uh, yeah. built the, the, the podcast as well. Uh, yeah. I mean, maybe you could speak to it too, but for me, the podcast has allowed me the opportunity to make friends because the fact that you are able to give me an opportunity to talk on your show 
live on air and to be able to talk about my story that I will never forget that, you know, like there's a special bond that we're having right now that I can't even Mm -hmm. explain in words, but it's a thing that like uh, two years from now, I'll be like, Hey, thank you. Or Mm -hmm. and vice versa. Um, So there's a particular bond that you have when you give somebody the ability to share your story. Um, So that's number, that's number one. But from the business side of it, you're create, you created a podcast about transforming your life. So I'm sure you had some experience that has led you to creating this particular style. Um, yep. and, and the same thing with me. I, uh, I was blind in business when I first started. It's called The Blind Entrepreneur, uh, The Blind mm-hmm. Entrepreneur Podcast. So I created it because I wanted to hear how other people were able to fix their blindness in business. And as of late, I, I mean, I've been able to, the, the next 10 episodes are probably the best episodes I've ever done in my entire life. And wow. I, I just hit, I hit 150, uh, 150 episodes. Cool. And I interviewed um, a, a really, uh, I don't know if you, where are you from again? I'm in North Carolina right now, but I'm from Detroit. Oh, okay. From Detroit originally. Okay. So mm-hmm. I don't think you have them down there, but there's a thing called Saxby's Coffee. Um, yeah, man. The, the, oh, you haven't done there? I've, I've heard of it. You've heard of it? Okay. So the CEO of Saxby's Coffee talked about company culture. Amazing interview. Um, mm-hmm. Talk to the former CEO of Four, Foursquare. I mean, this guy's dropping bombs left and right. Um, I interviewed Mark Suster, who is the uh, upfront, um, upfront Ventures. He has one of the most famous VC blogs in the world, uh, other side of the table. Um, uh, Scott Gerber was just released today, and he was the first book I ever read in entrepreneurship. I tweeted him in 2013 asking for advice. And here I am interviewing him on in, in 2018, um, awesome. right as he's about to launch his new book uh, that he just launched yeah. a couple a couple weeks ago. So it's just like I wouldn't have been able to do talk to these people if I didn't have a podcast. And now, from a business perspective, a couple of these guys are actually our customers now. Oh, and well. not to mention, they're able to give uh, they're able to introduce us to people just because you know, I built that relationship with them. So. Um, I mean, the reason why I started the podcast was, was to build my network, and that's exactly what it's doing. Mm-hmm. Dude, I'll tell you what, man. I, I started the show you know, on the same reasons you did, but my overarching plan was it's just it was the evolution of things. You know, I'm, I'm a speaker, mm. and mm-hmm. I'm always on the road, and I wrote a book. And I'm not really like – I don't like to write. Like I'm not like, a, oh, my God, I'm a blogger. Like I'm a dick. Like I just – I'd rather not, but it kind of seems like a, you know, not a necessity. But I watch a lot of Gary V. Hey, mm-hmm. I'm a Gary V. addict, right? Mm-hmm. Daily V show and Ask Gary V. All that stuff, and and I listen to what he says. But I seen where things were going. You know, he's got his media company and this thing. He's got this digital media and he, and some of the things he talks about. I was like, I wonder. And then it got me thinking. I'm like, well, what's next? Like, what's the next phase? And you always talk about changing and, and evolution and and uh, you know innovation and like what you know, and all that. So, using category design, I was like, well, I just don't want another podcast, mm-hmm. you know. So, so how am I going to be different? Like, not be better, you know? How am I going to do things differently? And so, right now, like I've had callers call into the show. So, if you're listening right now, you can call in. You can talk to us six five seven three eight three one one. Zero nine. Call in. Talk to us. Um, I wanted a live show. Like I wanted people to listen to me now, not record an episode and then three weeks later or a month later or whatever, you know, put it out. Like, like I wanted a live show. So at the end of mm-hmm. this recording, in 10 minutes, you'll have this show ready to go. So yeah, that's great. I literally do no editing. There's zero editing on this. I end the episode. It goes through an optimization software. I make sure that everything's good to go. No pops, clicks, craziness. And then, boom, it's ready to go. Like 10, 15 minutes. You, you'll get the link and then you can share it out and be like, Hey, I was just on the show, like literally five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? No, that's great. So that's awesome. You can take the link, you can put it on your website, say I was on the show. Like I take all of the podcasts I've ever been on. I put them all on my website. So anybody can come listen to any episode I've ever been on. But it's like, you know, we talk about the immediate reaction of things. You know, mm-hmm. everybody wants things now, the instant gratification. I literally solved two problems. I had instant gratification to where I have a live show. It's done. You get the podcast episode. Boom, that's done and complied with. And then the mm-hmm. second part, you know, was that 
I have a live show and and other people don't. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it like set me apart. Like I'm a live show. Like call in, talk. You know what I mean? So I'm always looking for ways to like set me apart. And it seems like you did just that. Like you called those companies and said, you know, what are you guys doing? Like what what's the problem? You know what what, what mm-hmm. can we solve? You know. And I love the mind that you have that you knew you had the wherewithal to say, you know what? Let me step back. Let me figure this out. And then boom, you go through it and you do it. Yeah. It's awesome. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, that's exactly it. So the re- the way that we were able to grow Penji um, isn't the sexiest way that most people um, could, would probably think of. Um, <laughs> it was leveraging our existing network to be completely Perfect. honest with you. So what we did. That's was- good. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's great. It worked well for us, but I mean, it may not work well for everybody. Um, you know, what we did was we, we sat down and said, okay, well, I, I think there was a three, four year period where I went to every single networking event on the planet. Um, and I just built this massive network of, of people and friends and, and people who I don't even really know just well, that, w- that well, but they're still friends on Facebook and stuff like that or Instagram or whatever, LinkedIn. And, um, and so what we did was by leveraging our network, we, we simply asked a survey. Um, we, we reached out to people who we thought would be our customers. Originally, we thought that our, our customers would have been um, startups because of the yep. price point that we're at. Excuse me, the price point that we're at because we're at $349 a month. Um, and what we realized is that the, the startups aren't actually our, our primary customers. I mean, we could work with them, but they're, they're not going to be the ones that are probably going to have to show the most value to us. Um, and we're not going to be able to, we're not going to be able to service them as well as like an agency. And so it took us a lot of time to find out that agencies were the, the perfect customer fit for us. But um, we interviewed people, we talked to them, we leveraged our network, we cold message, we cold email and said, Hey, we got a survey for you. Um, we got this new thing that we're working on. What can, what are your thoughts on it? Um, we'll give you guys a gift. We incentivize people to do it. And, um, and I think that that helped us acquire maybe you know, 30 customers in the beginning. And we simply wow. asked the question. We, we, we literally just said, hey, um, if we build this, will, will you buy it? And uh, they said, uh, yeah, I need this like Market now. research. So exactly. So we, they said yes. And we're like, all right, like, I think we're on to something here. Um, mm. And then... And then it became customers. They started paying. And this was before we even had software. Um, now we're a full wow. blown, we're about, we're about to be a full blown SaaS software. When this update um, happens. But, wow. but this is, we're doing the service without any of this, just through old school approaches like email and phone calls and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so like, there's a lot of people listening right now that, that may feel as if like, I just need that one thing in order to be, successful. And and I think that was, that's been our approach to life is like, you know, you don't need that one thing. Just shut up and do it. Um, Shut up and and just (laughs) put your mind to it now and and stop making excuses for, 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 for for yourself. Cause that's at the end of the day, it's kind of what it is. You're in your, you're in front of your, your, your own way. Yeah, man. I always, you know, I I mentor a few entrepreneurs that are in the first couple of years of business, you know, startups and, you know, creation phases is what I love. And, uh, you know, I tell them like, dude, you just got to make it happen. Like make it happen no matter what, but you have to say yes, like say yes and figure it out. You know, like it shouldn't be a, well, I'm not good at this. I'm not that Well, then outsource it, but I don't have enough money. Mm-hmm. But if you outsource it, then you double down on your strengths mm-hmm. and not try to do things that you're not good at. Like I'm not a designer, you know, like I, like, I was looking for designs earlier for show and t-shirt. Like I still haven't found a designer for t-shirts. I still need a t-shirt designer. So mm-hmm. I've got kind of a design, but I need somebody to produce the shirts, you know, and Teespring and all these other places I've been looking at. I'm just, I don't know which one to go to. So I rely on people, you know what I mean? And I'm like, what do you mm-hmm. think? What do you think? Like, I'm, I never just rely on one me, you know, myself and I, you know, I go to the experts. I, I outside, I'm like, look, I don't know how to do t-shirts. You figure that part out. This is what I need. Just make it happen. And, and it mm-hmm. just frees me up to double down on what my strengths are. Mm. Couldn't agree more, but I mean, you didn't get to that point until you found out you figured yourself out, right? <laughs> it's all lost a lot of money. <laughs> it yeah, went a, a ton of time. 
Some uh, sometimes that happens. I'd rather lose. I'd rather lose money than time. Uh, unfortunately, oh, sometimes they coin they coincide and be, they're the same exact. They're in the same exact space. Yep. But um. Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, I mean that. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I'll say. Uh, so, so what are some of the things that you guys do over over at Penji? Talk about your business, man. Like, what do you what do you guys do? If I if I found Jonathan on the street, and I said I'm looking for, or do you guys do, or, or why would I go to Penji? Sure. So at the end of the day, like the, the overarching theme of what Penji is, is we help agencies, marketing teams, small businesses, and startups with unlimited graphic design. So as soon as you go onto our website and you sign up for the service, you put your credit card in, your username and password, you immediately get met with a backend platform that asks you about your brand. Um, what does your brand do? What does your company do? How do you do it? And then you put us to work and you tell us exactly what you want done for your business. So we have a huge market of people that we work with that love t-shirt designs, um, that want us to do t-shirts designs. So let's just say your first project is a t-shirt design. Let's just say your first project is a logo or a web design or a marketing materials or social media content. I mean, you name it. We have clients that are asking for everything. And so we can do any form of graphic design for your business at a flat of 300 uh, starting at 349 dollars a month and we'll get to as many designs as we possibly can within that month that monthly basis and and that ranges at, uh, anywhere between um uh, eight to you know 60 designs at the end of the day um it really yeah. depends on on what it is that you're asking for what it is that you'll want um are you able to clearly identify the things that you need done can you communicate it on through text? And if a phone call is needed, we, we don't mind. Um, but these are the things that, um, that are important. And these are the things that you need to do in order for us to be successful, in order for you to get the things that you need. It, it's all about dialogue. It's all about that conversation. So Penji gives you the ability to communicate with your designer uh, in a way that you've never been able to design, uh, communicate with your design team before. Um, so we're, we always want to be that company that's always online and always on time. And the last thing that I have to say is that we deliver everything in under 48 hours. So regardless of wow. the project, it's going to be delivered to you in under 48 hours. So when you say, you know, like unlimited, um, when I had my business logo, the success core made, it was, here's a design. If you don't like it, we can rewrite it. But depending on how we need to restructure or rewrite it, it's an extra cost. And every time we rewrite the cost, like every time we redesign, it's an extra cost. Like it can get super expensive, man. I paid like a grand for a logo to get done, you know, mm -hmm. because I didn't like this. And then it's like, okay, well, he has to go back and redo it. And then, you know, there's some things that I want. And then he does it this way. I'm like, I don't like it that way. And so we were like back and forth, back and forth. And then boom. It came out. I was happy, and it was like a thousand. Yeah. So you're saying flat and, rate, like you, if you redesign, I mean, starting, starting, starting flat rate. You know, does that include like all the rewrites and and all that? Yes. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah. I mean, so the difference between that's what you guys apart like, everybody else. I would say, I mean, to some degree, yes. Um, yeah. So, for example, you're if you're a designer and you pay, let's say, you, I think you mentioned a thousand. So, if you paid a thousand dollars are you okay with it maybe taking like if you paid a thousand dollars to do it faster um, then that's one thing. But if you want to maintain the level of $349 um, and you're okay right. with it, maybe getting done two or three days later, then that's mm -hmm. as long as you're okay with the time gap, sure. then, then Penji's a perfect yeah. fit because we offer unlimited graphic design and unlimited revision. So even if we don't get it right the first time, which honestly, a lot of the times we do, um, and that's our goal is to get it right the first time. And if we're confused, <laughs> we ask questions because that's important right. to that communication. But um, yeah, if you feel as if that like you you want it done, redone, or you need another designer, or you need to have a second or third look, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's 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 fine. We'll we'll do that. Um, and and awesome. the time constraints. I mean, that ultimately eats up from a business perspective. That that eats up you know, the profit, of course, um, us being able to have to go back into it and, mm -hmm. and edit it repeatedly. But sure. our job is to get it done to your specifications as much as, as quickly as we possibly can. 
So you guys do like digital designs? Or, I mean, do you literally like design like T-shirt design and print the T-shirt, or do you just do the digital design? Uh, so we will just do the design. Um, okay. We won't print anything. So you can in the platform. There is a way to let us know if you're going to be printing this yourself, um, mm-hmm. because obviously there's different colors that you have to use versus sure. Um, you know something else, but um, yeah. So we, we won't we won't actually produce any physical material, uh, but we will we'll be able to design anything that you need. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, I think the design is like the hardest part. Like, I mean, anybody can yeah, print absolutely. it and you know whatever, but it's the design, man. That wow. So talk about some of the resources, man. Uh, you know, you talked about you know bootstrapping a business, and you know you um, you invest in some things, you know. So. So what does that look like? You know, what are some of the resources that, you know, if I wanted to get into something like that, you know, what are some of the resources I need to have? Do I need to have like a million dollars saved up? Uh, in order for like investing? Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, it, it ultimately depends on what you can bring to the table and what the, uh, the yeah. organization needs. Because I got you. like, you know, you can invest millions of dollars, um, and that's all well and good, but at the end of the day, I, I think you got to believe in the business, and you have right. to be able to yep. you have to be able to like understand the the model as well. And I think that's what a lot of people are just putting in businesses that maybe that that may not been able to see necessarily like a yep. uh, a profit just yet, um, and also they don't have necessarily a viable strategy, and they just. And so, oh, like, that's huge, gonna, man. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to invest, you got to be able to make sure that the the horse is actually rideable, <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> right. before you start dropping money on it. But yeah. yeah, I mean, there isn't necessarily a resource in mind, but you have to have the conversation and and ask them what their game plan is and how are they able to. Well, number one, hopefully you invest in something that has already made money, because if they if right. they're bleeding money and 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 it's obvious that they're bleeding money, then, you know, why, I mean, that's not, that's a hobby at that point, but, yep. you know, for us in particular, the, we know that, so, I mean, right now we're not looking for any type of investment capital, but mm-hmm. we know it's probably going to be needing in the future. Um, right. And we're not doing it. We're not asking for anything until we know that we got all of our craps figured out. Um, yeah, there you go. That, I mean, that's, that's important because we're still growing. We're still learning. And we just, we're about to launch a new feature of Benji and um, it's, it's the first of its kind. And we just came up with it maybe two, three weeks ago. And it's awesome. Innovation. And, and, yeah. So you always have to be able to find a way to innovate regardless of uh, the business yep. that you're in. I love it, man. And, and, and I think you spoke to something that, that is really important is that people are lured by the, the Facebook coaches and, and, and LinkedIn likes, you know, get out of your nine to five, join entrepreneurship. Yeah. You know, it, dude, it's rough, man. Like it's uh, like, you're on your I own. Don't believe you know what I mean? Part. You're not <laughs> right. Like I hear this stuff all the time. Like I can help you get out of your nine to five. I can help you like, but I mean, I've built three businesses, yeah. you know, from scratch. And I know that in the first year you're never going to make money. And if you do, it's, it's because you unlocked something, but then it, it becomes, you get to maintain that. You know what I mean? It's not just a flash mm-hmm. in the pan. Like you, I mean, you might make, you know, a decent amount, but you got to sustain that, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, that part's tough, but entrepreneurship, man, it's, um, you know, it's a tough game. So, so I'm, I I'm think curious. the people who, go ahead, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. Nope, nope, go ahead. Well, well I just think the, the people that are trying to convince other people to become entrepreneurs, I just think that's so wrong. Um, yeah. It's, it's, it's just like a bait and switch type of thing. Like, if you're not, if you're a real entrepreneur, you wouldn't be doing that. Like you would already be doing it. Like you don't need that. You don't need that yep. push. Um, mm-hmm. You just need that guidance. You don't need the push to jump over the edge. And listen, I think Gary Vee is a great guy and his content is really cool. Um, mm-hmm. I've completely stopped listening to his stuff. Um, <laughs> and I don't listen. Perfect. I actually blo- I blocked him on all social platforms because I don't, want to see any of it and not that it's yeah. not good i'm sure it's good um but like i i need to be able to make my own life 
and, and write yeah. my own my own passage my, my own passages but I just think it's a, such a scam that, that people are making I mean I don't even think they're that successful the people that are like get out of your nine to five like I can't imagine them being um, you know successful so to speak it's just yeah, yeah. it's it's. it's uh, I know a lot of entrepreneurs man and I don't know any of them that are super super successful that are harping on to you know get out of your nine to five get out of, like that's not what they're doing. They're like, Hey man, if it's for you, it's for you. If not, then don't do it. Like those are the, yeah. like exactly what you're saying. Like, dude, if you don't want to do it, like don't do it. Like don't get into it just because it's, it's the fad. Like yeah. it's a lifestyle. Like entrepreneurship yeah. is a lifestyle. You know what I mean? My wife and I, man, like we, we get after each other cause I, it's, it's nine, 10 o'clock at night. I'm still, you know, I'm either, you know, building a podcast episode, you know, creating, creating another episode for tomorrow. Or I've got my Mac, I have a mastermind, entrepreneur, speaker, and business owner mastermind, you know, so I'm, I'm probably doing something with that, or I'm updating a website, or I'm, you know, researching something, or I'm always doing something. I'm never just sitting, you know, and she's like, hey, it's getting kind of late, like, like, come over here now. I'm like, oh, crap. So, I mean, it's, well, do, it's are you and, Are you and your wife in business together? Uh, the, the, the one we did, but uh, this one's just me, like, speaking, training. Yeah you know, mentoring, like that's all, that's all me. Like she's a keeper of my schedule. Like she does all the schedule and secretary stuff, but no, I mean, it's just, it's just me doing like mastermind and, and different things. But yeah. uh, she just, she just makes sure the contracts are sent. She makes sure Good. that the nit noise stuff that I might forget, like she has my back on the, all the, all that like administrative stuff, Yeah. you know, good. but, um, but yeah, man, like it's a lifestyle, you know what I mean? So, so I'm curious for you, you know, where, where are you headed now? What kind of new businesses, ventures, you know, family, you know, where do you see Penji going? You know, talk about the future. Nothing matter. Nothing else matters to me. And, uh, other than the success of everything that's happening with Penji, um, I think in order to achieve the goals that we want to achieve, um, you have to, you have to be on call um, 24 seven and you have to be in the game 24 seven. I mean, we have a very out lavish goal, um, and, and where we want to take the company. And, and so in order to have that, like you have to be able to make sacrifices, the ones that you were talking about, and you have to be able to, um, miss key marquee events in people's lives. And you may not be able to take a vacation or whatever it is. It's, it's not, I would say it's a lifestyle, but it's your life. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like I live and breathe this and I want to be able to, I want to be able to make sure that other people are able to be successful um, in addition to Penji. So the future of Penji, I'd say is, is a couple of things. It's the first thing that we want to achieve is um, it's the next goal, which is the milestone is 300 customers. Um, I think we're sitting at like 200 something right now. And uh, so 300 customers, after 300 customers, uh, it's going to go to 500, then 500 is going to be 1,000, then 1,000, 5,000, 5,000, 10,000. So we want to have 10,000 customers on, on Penji. Um, the, the second thing is, that's a business perspective, the, the socially conscious aspect of who we are, um, what we want is we want to be able to hire 100 students by the end of 2019. And um, that doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be a per, like a, an actual employee and have 100 employees, but we want to be able to give opportunities to over 100 students um, and, and residents of the city of Camden, um, because our mission is to give back to our community, and our mission is to give back to people who who, who deserve the the opportunities. Um, like as mentioned before, just, just like you and I are able to have the opportunities. Um, and they may be judged based off of the color of their skin or, or they may be judged uh, based off of their background or where they previously worked. Um, and so, mm -hmm. and, that, and that's kind of what we're doing. We're, we're providing those opportunities to people. And that's something that really allows me to feel good about myself and allows me to wake up every single morning, like really, really amped and excited to, to start my day. Because again, as mentioned before, it's not about me anymore. It's about, it's about everybody else. Right. Yeah, I love it, man. You got an awesome why. You got a great attitude. You got a bright future, man. So this is the moment of the show before we close where we do a shameless plug. You can plug a friend, quote, your websites, Facebook, your products, whatever it is that you want to give a shout out to and talk about. Shameless plug moment. 
go. Head over to Penji.co, and if you are interested in what it is that I talked about today, you believe in somewhat similarly to the way I believe, and you feel as if the Penji can be a valuable resource for your business, Penji.co and use the coupon code PODCAST15 for 15% off on your first month of Penji. Boom. I'm putting it right on Facebook right now. <laughs> Go to Penji.co. There it is. I'm putting it on there. Good I checked stuff. out your stuff, man, and, like, you guys do amazing things, man. I'm like, dang, like, this is, like, it's what we need. You know what I mean? Like, there's so many design places and, you know, graphic designers and everything, but, like, this is kind of like a one-stop shop, man. Like, that's, that's what I love, man. I love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, listen. There's there's a lot of great uh, similar companies, um, and our competition is 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 great. We love the the competition, but I think what we're constantly cognizant about uh, is just the needs of the organization and uh, and the needs of our customers. Excuse me, the needs of our customers first and foremost, other than right. anything else. Um, and so we're always listening to our customers. I think we get on phone calls for every single one of our customers. Um, it doesn't matter what they're paying. It doesn't matter how long they've been there. Um, when our customers leave, I mean, because we're, when they're not going to be on our, as much as it would be off that they were, um, they're not going to be able to be on our platform forever. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we asked them why we asked them, why were you, why did you leave? You know, why did you, yeah. why do you, why are you done? Why don't you need this anymore? What did we do wrong? How can we get better? And you would be surprised about the amount of people that have been able to give us their honest opinion. It yeah. feels good. It, it feels really good that, that somebody can look at you in, dead in the eye and say, you know what? You suck right now. And you're a bad fit. For uh-huh. you, have to, you have to be able to accept that. And you have to be able to be okay with that. Um, right. But, but it's going to make yeah, you we got a my better. Buy-in. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to make you a better business owner. And it's going to make you a, a better business professional once you hear that stuff. Perfect. You rock, brother. So as you wrap up, can you deliver your best nugget of knowledge that will motivate, transcend, and inspire someone to take massive action? I'm going to say something relatively controversial, and especially because you are a fan of uh, said entrepreneur. Stop reading articles. Stop watching videos. And just focus on your business. And if you are to read anything, and if you are to watch anything, make it a published book that is tr- by a trusted entrepreneur or business professional or whatever. Read a book that is in a popular uh, store that maybe has gone through publishing because that book in itself has gone through a, a thousand edits. And it's been discussed by a group of people. And the book has the stories of people who have done it before. And so that's probably number one. And then I'll just end on two, if that's okay with you. Um, yeah, man, do it. Is just get out of your own way. And if you feel as if it, we all have an ego, and I understand that, and that's totally cool, but get out of your own way. Find a way to just, Focus on your goals and worry about the people that are helping you and the people that care about you most and stop worrying about yourself. Drop the ego. Let it be scratched. Do the work of a janitor if you have to in order to, make, to be successful and stop making it about you. We're very selfish in this world of digital media and we're constantly mm-hmm. putting the, the selfie camera on us where the selfie camera can just as well uh, be on them if given the opportunity. Boom. What a great call to action, man. I love that. Well, you rock, man. I got it on Facebook. Right there. Crushing it, man. I love the mentality that you have. I love the attitude. And uh, I love the business, man. I, I'm just, I was looking at it before the show. I'm like, this is like super cool. So, um, yeah, man, I want to thank, uh, you know, our mutual friends that got us together and talking about your, your company. So go to 
Penji is P E N J I. www.penji.co. P-E-N-J-I, you can look up Jonathan Guzbowski at facebook.com forward slash Jonathan dot G R Z Y B O W S K I. Any last words, man, before we close the show? Thank you guys so much for this, uh, for the opportunity to, to, for you guys to listen. Um, and just have fun. That's all, that's what life's all about. Yeah, man. Have fun. And this was fun. And, uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, share my story today. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Dude, you rock, man. So life transformation radio listeners connect with him for all of your graphic design needs. If you need logos, if you need just any, any pictures, marketing, digital, whatever, man, in your business, this is the guy. This is the only company you will need, Penji.co, P-E-N-J-I.co. So as we close the show, I always say live your brand. Find opportunities every day to live out the core values that you have in your heart. And I call that living your brand. So until next episode. Have a great night. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port of number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions. Skydiving. This is amazing. Yeah, but you know what else is amazing? An iPhone 6S for just 49 bucks at Metro. Really? Imagine streaming all the way down with that amazing camera. I'm switching. That's smart. You know what else is smart? Parachutes. Woo! Switch to Metro and get an amazing iPhone 6S for only 49 bucks. Metro by T-Mobile. Phone offer requires port of number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. See store for details and terms and conditions.